I'm very miserly in the kitchen. And I learned that from my mom. She had a little restaurant in Lyon called Le Pelican. And when I was a kid, every day my two brothers and I used to walk with my mother to the market along the river who started at three o'clock in the morning. She would walk the entire market looking and comparing product. My brother and I took what she bought back to the restaurant and then we went to school and my mother started cooking to be ready to serve for lunch at the restaurant. The dish may have been very simple, but they were very fresh every day. There was no refrigeration. Three courses, including bread, service, everything included, a carafe of wine for five francs, about one dollar at the time. She really had to use everything to make it worthwhile. And she did. That's where I learned to be thrifty in the kitchen. And today, Claudine and I are making some of the dishes that she served at the Pelican on Jacques Pepin Heart and Soul. Today we're doing a gratin of egg and Swiss chard. Mm -hmm. Does that remind you anything? Of my me, yes. always, and of you. Yes, yes me too. as well. My mother mm -hmm. used to do those type of things at Le Pelican, a little restaurant. Actually, when we were a kid, we ate eggs much more than meat and poultry. That was our, our protein, and I still do. Yep. I mean, that gratin here is a main course for our meal. So first, we do hard-cooked eggs. OK, so. All right, that egg, if that egg's out cooked or raw? Oh, I don't remember now. Well, you do this. What it do doesn't you mean you turn. Do this? It doesn't turn. Does it turn? Oh, no. Give me one over there. This is out cooked. The more solid it is, Ooh. that will stand. It will stand on, on the hand. Whoop. It stands Very totally on nice. the hand when it's totally solid and cooked. I think. <laughs> okay. I hope so. <laughs> now, you know, a lot of eggs that you have. In restaurant, I judge a restaurant by this, all green around the, the yolk. And because when you put that egg in water, the sulfur in the egg white goes toward the center of the egg, get away from the, the heat. And it makes, there is a physical reaction with the iron in the egg yolk. And you have that beautiful green tinge <laughs> all around and strong smell of sulfur. Mm. So to avoid this, we are going to cook the eggs and right away put them in ice cold water. So the egg feels the cold, the sulfur across the egg white and dissipate in the water. But first, for your egg not to crack, people say to put salt. Salt doesn't do anything. If the eggs crack and if you have salt, it kind of, it's like a band-aid, it prevents bleeding. But mm -hmm. otherwise, on the round part of the egg, there is the chamber, the air chamber here. So you make a hole in the air chamber. This one, this one. And then when I put that into the water, the pressure that you have in the eggs here is going to come out there. And you will see like, a, little, a, li like a, li bubbles. a little volcano, you know, the pressure comes out of this. Uh, you want to cook your eggs just under the boil, very simmering. If you boil it too much, it toughens the albumin, you know, again, the egg white. So 10 minutes this way. And after 10 minutes, we here have some here. Pour out the water. You know, I put ice and water in it so that it cool off and leave it long enough so that it's cold inside. And what I do, I crack the egg all over the place like this, and then you can start shelling it. Usually the best way to shell it is under, under water. And you go under the membrane, then it's going to be much easier to shell. Okay, here we have our eggs. With this, we are going to do Swiss chard. Yes. Which this, is I, really great I because this grows shot, like yeah. crazy in the garden. When I was a kid, we only used the rib, but they were very large. And uh, with the grain, my mother would do, uh, She'd do something like, else, like, like spinach, you know, or whatever. Oh, yeah. But here, we use the whole thing. Okay. So it's just washed and cleaned washed. up and, a little and, bit. And, and, and it's, that's uh, it. well, you, I washed them. I know, I said washed. Okay. And uh, because uh, they are wet, there is enough weight in it. I'm just going to cook it this way. Nothing in the pan. Dash of salt. That's it. Are you going to do the bechamel? I'll do the bechamel. Okay, and then I slice the mushroom. 
And you know those mushrooms look a bit dirty, so I'm going to run them under water. Okay. Right there. And in the meantime, I'm going to add about one and a half tablespoons of butter, one and a half tablespoons of flour to a pretty hot pan. And I'm going to cook the flour, right? You're going to melt your butter I'm and you're going to put your flour to make a roux. Right. So now so I'm slicing my mushroom. And can you explain to me again why it doesn't make lumps? Because it doesn't make lumps when you do this. And I know it doesn't well, make lumps, but yeah, I don't understand also why. Also, when you do that type of thing, you know, go with the palm of your hand. You see in the corner like this here? Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's where you, especially after you put the milk. Here we have the roux, flour and butter. It's hot. You put the milk cold in it, bring it to a boil, and, uh, and that's it. You have a bechamel or a white sauce. And this My is mother the... called that a bechamel. On front, it's a bechamel. That's the name of it. Of course, when she came to this country, I told her it's called a white sauce. She thought it was a really fancy name for it. <laughs> so uh, you know, everything is I think it's ready for the milk. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't so you put the it. cold milk all at once. Salt, pepper, to see. I like about a cup and a half of mushroom, here I have. So let's see that. Okay. Yeah, they're drying out. It's, yeah, I don't want it wet. Right. Too wet because we have the sauce on top, we have cheese. All right. I put it in there. So pretty much everything is cooked before it goes into the gratin dish. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this you could assemble, you know, two or three weeks before if you wanted to. A couple of years. <laughs> or at least a couple of hours. Put a bit of olive oil in there. Okay. And I run in. That's it. Here we are. I had never seen a red, uh, a red <laughs> Swiss shard. I mean, I don't know what I did. It was only the... Only the green? Yeah. Okay. Mushroom. Okay, this is just starting to, to get a little bit thick, I think. One and a half a cup of milk, and we add one and a half tablespoons of uh, flour. Mm -hmm. You can go up to three tablespoons of okay, flour now we're boiling. per cup, per cup of milk, to do a thick sauce at the base of a souffle. And half low of one teaspoon, which is a third, per cup of milk to do a very light cream sauce. Here you go. And I think it's done. Milk. It's you see that going like this? Okay. Then stop it, yeah. Stopping it. Okay. So now we put this on top. You know, often I do it with Swiss chard or spinach, and I don't put any mushroom, but the day I did it probably had mushroom hanging around, and so let's use it. So you can see that the eggs you slice it this way, and it should have a nice, you know, That's bright, perfect. bright color like this, without any of the green tinge mm -hmm. on the other hand. That is the perfect egg. You know, those things here are terrific. The the to slice the eggs. Yes. Like if I do a an egg salad, I cut it this way, turn it the other way, mm -hmm. cut it this way, and I have the egg salad. You know, already. I love those things. I can put it in there, it doesn't matter, it's going to be covered anyway. Right. Two eggs, we give two eggs per person here. Two eggs per person? Yeah, okay. so I put one egg already, so you go <laughs> ahead. We season, did I season? No, I did no. season the mushroom, so. I'm going to put a little bit of that on top. One more here. And I'm ready this for the bechamel. All right. This is such a beautiful first course, or dinner, or lunch, no, this is nice. or snack. Mm -hmm. And you want to... Uh, and we'll put some cheese on top? Yeah, you want to put some gruyere on mm -hmm. top. I could have had a little more, a little more sauce. You think? Yeah. You can put, of course, uh, Parmesan cheese or other type of cheese, but conventionally, in Lyon, certainly, mm -hmm. we use a lot of Gruyere, Emmentaler, Beaufort, Comté. Those are all those type of Swiss cheese. Okay. Okay. Oof. Smells that good. smells smell the really good. You see the, the red here a yeah, little bit? Yeah, it bleeds just a little the, bit. I love eggs. I do too. I love eggs. <laughs> With Gruyere. Yeah. 
mushroom too. I would do a meal with that mm. any time of the day. Mm -hmm. of the year. It's really good. good one. So here is the gratin of Swiss chard and eggs. We're going to do a stew of radishes now. I mean, in spring, when I have a lot of radish in the garden around, I like to cook them too, and people don't really cook radishes. No, it's pretty rare, Food and they're really good. good. Uh. We are not really strong. I'm going to put a little piece of butter. I'm going to put a little bit of water so that they moisten a little bit, they soften a little bit. Right, and the water will essentially evaporate, right? Yeah, oh yes. The water will be gone by the time we do. A bit of salt. Dash of water. That's it. Okay. Lid. Okay. Well, you can see now, it kind of uh, become translucent. Okay. Thank you. So I'll uncover it now mm -hmm. so that we evaporate the liquid a little bit, a couple of minutes. Okay. Need salt? I think it needs salt. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, put some salt in. So when you hear it sizzling again because there's butter in there, mm -hmm. then it's done, right? Yeah. Maybe we just put a little piece of parsley like this. Like just the leaves? Yeah. And I finish with a little bit of walnut oil to flavor it a little bit. This is a terrific winter vegetable. Winter? Right? Well, you know, <laughs> spring. When, when does the radish go in your garden? Well, unfortunately, you can get radishes all year long. Okay. All right, so you just want to put these on top? I know I'm going to do it wrong anyway, so you might as no, well no, just no, rearrange did, it. Uh, it's amazing, I amazing know. what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pretty that is. Okay, so this is just the sauteed the radishes. The stew of radish with walnut oil. This is another warm dish with going to uh, warm your belly and, and your, your heart. heart and your soul and your soul during <laughs> the cold winter month. And it is uh, a mixture of rib, which I'm going to cure and small lima beans. And we have sausage and we have kale, kale. and yes, everything. So we're going to cure these ribs, right? We're going to cure those. Ribs, OK, yes. so I know that that requires a bag. That's and to start with, you can use them this way, but those are so much better if you cure them. Cure them until the fact that you're going to put them in salt, just like when you do ham, pate, anything that you cure, you put into salt. But this and is a special curing salt. It is a curing salt. Yeah, it's a curing salt, a mixture of uh, a little more than 90%, 99% salt in this, mm -hmm. and 1% of... Uh, a sodium chloride and sodium nitrate. Oh, and okay. And that's a mixture of curing salt. And, and it's not uh, bad for you. I mean, people have done it for thousands of years. The so. Greek, the Greek used to yeah. do it, and then the Chinese discovered saltpeter also, and they, they made they made the you know what they made with it, gun yes. gunpowder. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, okay. I I think I like this better than I like gunpowder. I know that you also <laughs> put um, brown sugar in here. Brown sugar. Yeah quarter of a cup of this, just put it in there, shake the pan, and... Uh, it's like the original do, shake yeah, and bake. Do, do it pretty close like this. I do it pretty close like that, so I can put it in the refrigerator. Okay. This way. And then now distribute that thing. And every two, three hours, you know, you turn it from this side to this side, and right. you cure and it 24 hours. 24 hours. The beauty of it, sometimes in curing, like when you cure salmon, for example, with salt, uh, sometimes it cures to saturation, that is totally covered with salt. Then you have to calculate your timing, otherwise it gets too salted. Mm. Often when I do things, I measure the amount of curing salt. So 24 hours, but I believe if I leave it 48 hours, even 36 hours, won't make any difference because it has absorbed that amount of salt and it doesn't absorb more than that. I right, because to... you didn't dunk it into salt to exactly. let it absorb. Here okay, it I'm putting it in the fridge, right? In the fridge, that's okay. fine. Thank you. And then we have small lima beans there. So uh, what I do when I use different types of beans, I put them on one side and kind of up, get out, sometimes you have sometimes pebble and uh, sometimes damaged beans or whatever. So you go through up this one here. 
you go through this way to clean it up. Oh, and sometimes you get rocks. Yes, and but I've done it. Okay, give me the sieve, Titin. Yeah. Uh, you can use them like that, but I think it's a little bit better if you... Uh, you rinse them. If you rinse them, yes. Yeah, so. Okay, just run it under water. Okay. Okay. You can give them to me in that beautiful pot. Okay. Okay. Salt in there. And, and then water. water. And that's it. That's the beginning of our recipe. So and that will cook for one hour. Okay. My beans are not quite cooked now, but they have been cooking an hour and they are fine. So next step, okay. the rib are ready. So you cured these yesterday. Yeah, those were cured. And now I want to run that under water. And this will get rid of some of the salt? Yes, I mean, yeah. the extra salt on top, but now they have been... But now the color is totally changed. The color will be like the difference that you have between a roast of pork yeah. and a ham. Yeah. Those rib will be beautifully red. Got it. And the kale. So you just put the whole raw kale in there. I mean, yeah, cleaned, the obviously. Kale. The kale cook a long time, and I'm going to cook that, bring that to a boil, cook that 30 minutes. You know? And the kale is so good. You know, Shoy loves kale. Yes. Yep. And after that, we put more meat in it. We're going to put Italian sausage and calabasa. I mean, you don't have to put all of this. And then all of the vegetable over there. Yeah. So, Claudine. And this is a great thing to freeze and, you know, make a big pot of, and then you can freeze half of it oh, and yeah. have it. Yeah. No, it's so really this, good. This is. I'm not removing the casing. This is a natural casing here. So you are removing it, or you don't? No, I'm remove not it? because this is not. This is a natural casing. Okay. It's not plastic. It's made of. Uh, but this is cooked. I mean, this when you one, buy the kielbasa, it's already kielbasa cooked. Kielbasa is cooked. This one is not cooked. Italian sausage, you know. And we're going to cut it. Just this in way. pieces. This is, this is going to go in it too. In two or three pieces, it's fine. And, and then you want garlic, onions. Onion, garlic, okay. celery, carrot, leek. So we put a lot of vegetable in there. Smell like winter. Mm -hmm. Smell like the big stew. Okay. So that we'll and go this, in. this and that will go in in like 30 minutes. Whoa, it's been 30 minutes now. And the kale's cooked down a lot. Look at that, Here. Titin. Yeah. How beautiful red right there. Ooh. Not quite cooked because only 30 minutes. So that's it, huh? Okay. Bring the okay. rib, all of that stuff. This is a big stew. That's a big <laughs> stew. For a lot of people, yeah. But this is so good. Like I said, I mean, this is, you make this and you freeze half of it, and then you have a wonderful, heartwarming, great dinner in a hurry. That's it. There is enough liquid. I can push it inside, see the liquid come. But the vegetables will also release that some liquid down, too, yeah, right? Yeah. So bring that to a boil and that will take, it's like before when I put the kale and uh, the rib in it, I tell you to boil it for 30 minutes. You have to realize that it will at least take 10 minutes before it come back to a boil. Mm -hmm. Then you boil it 30 minutes. This will take another 10 minutes at least to come back to a boil. Then we boil it 30 minutes and then we're ready to eat. And finally now, all the dish it is there. You know, I mixed it a couple of times. Oh. I mean, look at that. It smells so good. And here, or okay, that. Let's start with this. All right. I mean, look what we put in there. Boy, I tell you. I hope oh, you. Oh, look I, at that. Hope you invited a lot of friends. I did. That is a beautiful, beautiful. Oh, it smells so good, Papa. Okay, you know what? Mm. Yeah, a bit of the green. All right. Okay. Still not too hot. You have some liquid in there. Put some Tabasco for me in there. Okay. Yeah. Tabasco is not very French, but it's very delicious. I am not very French. But you're <laughs> very delicious. <laughs> okay, here. Can you taste? Yeah, see now it's cooked. Oh, yeah. And you see the color of it? It's not, uh, now it's cured, you know, and it's... 
Mm. You have like asbestos mouth. I need a second. Mmm. Oh, so good. Good stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. And this is the kale, sausage, ribs, and bean stew. Today, it wasn't a menu, right? No, not really. It was wonderful, wonderful food, but not a menu. Some wonderful dishes to freeze. To freeze? To freeze. No, you're not going to freeze those eggs. <laughs> They're all main course. I mean, the eggs is a main course. Stews are main courses. Yeah, stews are main course. Yeah. So we do just a light dessert like okay. that, and I have a... a, a oh, nice cantaloupe. A cantaloupe here. Peel it thick enough, because otherwise it's green underneath, and you have to peel it again. So, so you take the skin plus. Yeah. Your husband would do that very well. He's got big hands. Yes, he does. To hold. <laughs> We have a lot of cantaloupes in the house. Good. So this. Okay. And this. Now at that point, cut it in half. I want to empty this. Okay. You know, the classic melon that we used to do when I was a kid was the melon like this. Uh, we sell smaller melon, you know, cantaloupe melon, they were small. Yeah, it's so melon de cabayon, isn't that? Ca cabayon, a small one, yeah. And we used to serve half a melon like that on the plate, empty mm. and fill that up with port wine. Oh, that you know, sounds that's what nice. The melon au porto was really classic, you know. So here, what we are going to do is to put some uh, uh, blueberry there. I have uh, maple. Maple syrup? Maple syrup, yes, oh. I love to. And some lemon, a little bit of the zest of lemon. You could take it with a vegetable peeler, but mm -hmm. you can do it with a Of course, you can do it with a knife. knife. Well. I've, yeah. And then maybe cut it to, to, give, to, to give a little bit of color to it. And taste, I mean, the rind. Yeah, yeah the, the, the rind has a lot of taste. So should I take that and mix it together? Yeah. I'm going to give you that. OK. And the juice of the lemon that to my clean finger. Oh, maybe a little more, I like them. Yeah, the lemon juice you is like really lemon too. Yeah. Shuri would like that. Shuri would like lemon that. Juice, eh? And what I do with that lemon, uh, with that uh, melon now, melon and lemon uh, make my <laughs> life difficult. Uh, we cut big ring like this, you know. Ooh. Oh, that, that's and gonna be fun. serve one okay. thing, bring your Take a ring of uh, melon and then fill it up with the thing in the center. Papa, and it's you have some simple, sage over there too. Are you going to use sage? Yeah, we can put a bit of sage on top of it. Sage okay. is not really used very often. Well, I, I, I like, certainly not in desserts. Well, uh, you know, it, it has a wonderful fragrance. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can put a bit of the juice on the outside. There. All right. <laughs> Right, now this one needs to. And this is our very simple melon medley with, uh, with blueberry and uh, maple syrup. Going down memory lane, the spirit of cooking that my mother had, maybe not the exact recipe, but her spirit is here. I wish she could have been here to enjoy it with us. She's always here with us. I agree with you. <laughs> I hope you do those recipes for your friend. They will enjoy it. Happy cooking. Happy cooking. <laughs>